Performing an advanced inspection for proximity clothing is nearly identical to advanced inspection for structural coats and pants. The differences are in the evaluation of the fabric of the outer shell. All separable layers of the coat and pants, including the DRD, need to be inspected individually. Verify the liner system is compatible with the outer shell. The model number and size are printed on the labels attached to each component. If they differ, contact the manufacturer or verified ISP before returning the garment to service. Now, test the attachments that hold the liner in place. Make sure all zippers, Velcro, and snaps work properly by opening and closing them. Check to see if there is any corrosion or wear that could inhibit the attachment's ability to hold your liner system in place during firefighting activities. Examine the stitching that attaches Velcro and zippers to the garment. Make sure there are no broken or missing stitches or any fraying. Any faulty or weak attachment should be noted on your inspection form and designated for repair before returning the garment to service. Remove the liner system and the DRD from the coat and the liner system from the pants and set it aside while you inspect the outer shell. Closely examine the entire length of each seam. Look for missing or broken stitches. If you see either, note it on the inspection form. Include the specific location of the missing or broken stitch. Check each seam's integrity. Do this by pulling on the seams in a way comparable to the stress you might put on a seam when wearing the garment. Grasp material on both sides of the seam and pull in opposite directions. Work your way down the seam, testing the entire length. If you observe any looseness, note its location on the inspection form. Check the aluminized outer shell material for delamination, discoloration, thin spots, holes, tears, embrittlement, cracking, burns, abrasions, and worn spots. Reflectivity of the aluminized surface is a major factor in heat protection. If the reflective quality is dull, or if the aluminized surface is abraded or cracked to the degree where the bare fabric is exposed, the aluminized outer shell should be repaired or replaced. Discoloration is a sign of overexposure to light or heat. Embrittlement, cracking, or burns on the outer shell are also signs that other layers may be worn or damaged and must be thoroughly inspected. Document any damage you have discovered on your inspection form and do not return the garment to service until it has been repaired. Examine the DRD and liner systems of proximity coats and pants exactly as you do structural turnout gear. Start with a clean helmet. Remember, dirt and soiling can hide signs of damage and wear. Check the helmet shell for cracks, dents, abrasion, thermal damage, bubbling or soft spots, and contamination. If any are present, record it on the inspection form and mark the helmet to be retired from service. Inspect the face shield and or goggles for cracks, scratches, charring, distortion or damage from heat or flames that could limit vision. Mark any damage on the inspection form and designate the face shield or goggles to be replaced. Look for missing, loose or damaged adjustment knobs. Verify the functionality of the face shield and or goggles. If any items are missing, can't be tightened or are damaged, note it on the inspection form. Do not return the helmet to service until it has been repaired. Examine the reflected trim for melting, loss of retro reflectivity, fluorescence and separation from the shell. Employ the same retro-reflectivity field test that is used for structural turnout clothing. You can review the test by selecting the Trim Test chapter on your DVD. If the trim is damaged or underperforming, identify it on the inspection form and designate the helmet for repair. On the inside of the helmet, look for cracks, deterioration, or other damage. Check for torn straps, torn padding, or breaks in the helmet suspension system. Inspect the headband for tears, breaks in the plastic connectors, and broken or loose adjustment ratchet. Make sure the chin strap has no damage and the attachment buckle and adjustments work properly. If any damage or malfunction is detected, document it on the inspection form and do not return the helmet to service until it has been repaired. Find the safety labels, cleaning instructions, and manufacturer's identification labels. They should be legible and securely affixed. Look for separation around the outer edge of the label and curling in the corners. If any are illegible, missing, or loose, note it on the inspection form and contact the manufacturer for instructions. If the advanced inspection was satisfactory, reassemble the helmet and return it to service. If it needs repair or additional testing, send it either to an ISP or the manufacturer.
To inspect a proximity firefighting helmet, place the helmet on a clean surface in a well-lighted room. Remove the overcover and shroud components and inspect the helmet using the same techniques and process as you would a structural helmet. When inspecting the face shield of a proximity helmet, look for scratches, peeling, heat damage, and worn spots. These can cause a loss of face shield reflectivity. If you discover any of these types of damage, document it on the inspection form. Do not return the helmet to service until the face shield has been replaced. It cannot be repaired. Inspect your helmet's overcover and shroud components. Engage and disengage all attachments to make sure they work properly. Examine the Velcro for worn, abraded, or melted pieces. Test the elasticity at the brim of the cover. Make sure it's sufficient to hold the cover in place. Mark any attachment damage or wear on your inspection form. Closely examine the entire length of each seam on the cover and shroud. Look for missing or broken stitches. If you see either, note it on the inspection form. Include the specific location of the missing or broken stitch. Check each seam's integrity. Grasp material on both sides of the seam and pull in opposite directions. Work your way down the seam, testing the entire length. If you observe any looseness, note its location on the inspection form. Do not return the cover or shroud to service until the seam has been repaired. Inspect the aluminized fabric of the cover and shroud. Look for delamination, discoloration, thin spots, holes, tears, embrittlement, cracking, burns, abrasions, and worn spots. Also inspect the surface of the shroud's thermal lining. Reflectivity of the aluminized surface is a major factor in heat protection. If the reflective quality is dull, or if the aluminized surface is abraded or cracked to the degree where the bare fabric is exposed, the aluminized outer shell should be repaired or replaced. Document any damage you have discovered on your inspection form. Do not return the cover or shroud to service until it has been repaired. If the advanced inspection was satisfactory, reassemble the helmet with cover and shroud and return it to service. If it needs repair or additional testing, send it either to an ISP or manufacturer. Keep this DVD on file for reference and training. If you have any questions, visit www.liontotalcare.com.